apologize for the hurt that my actions have caused my family, my friends and colleagues and the citizens of Charleston, and that I made a mistake and I, I'll own my actions, and that I fully cooperated with the investigation that was conducted by the human resources of the city of Charleston. And through that investigation, I agreed that I misused city property for a personal matter. And through that, I received a discipline of three days unpaid suspension back in June of last year. And that this was a, a lapse in personal judgment. He sat down in his office chair behind his desk. He grabbed my wrist with his arm and just pulled me over to him, to where I was facing him, and he had me to sit down. Then. I got up within a minute and took a seat in the original chair I was going to sit in. He proceeded to remove his clothing, okay. everything but a tank top that he had on. He walked in front of me, in front of the chair, the row of chairs I was sitting in, and he laid down on his back and he grabbed my wrist again and pulled me on top of him again. On the floor? Yes. We hear from the woman accusing Charleston Police Chief Ty Conta of using his influence to promote an FBI investigation involving accusations of online harassment. And the chief himself explains why an online relationship with that woman resulted in an unpaid three-day suspension for him last year. Eyewitness News lead investigative reporter Kenny Bass has our story tonight. Jenny Harless says a LinkedIn hookup and ensuing online conversations with Charleston Police Chief Tyke Hunt led to an in-person meeting in Hunt's City Hall office in the spring of last year. We had discussed just small talk. I had mentioned to him that I was doing some things at my house, some home projects, and he mentioned he was a contractor, a licensed contractor. And at some points he offered to help me, somebody he just met online, but he was, said he was a nice guy like that. Text messages provided by Harless outline a growing flirtatious relationship between her and the married chief of police. They exchanged explicit photographs and conversations. She says it culminated when Hunt invited her to visit his third floor office. He sat down in his office chair behind his desk. He grabbed my wrist with his arm and just pulled me over to him to where I was facing him and he had me to sit down. Then I got up within a minute and took a seat in the original chair I was going to sit in. He proceeded to remove his clothing, okay. everything but a tank top that he had on. He walked in front of me, in front of the chair, the row of chairs I was sitting in, and he laid down on his back and he grabbed my wrist again and pulled me on top of him again. On the floor? Yes. And what happened? I sat there for a moment. I told him again, I told you before I came, nothing was going to happen. And he said, okay. Harless says following their office encounter, further communication with Hunt was limited and eventually ended. Angered by his actions, she says she contacted his wife. It hurt my feelings because I didn't understand what I had done. You know, I'm, I'm a human. It just hurt my feelings. I'm also ADHD. So ADHD people tend to react before they think. And you reacted. And I reacted. And you reached out to? I reached out to Jessica, his wife. Following their online conversation, Harless is an FBI agent and member of the West Virginia State Police visited both her workplace and her home. You're not nature or anything like that. I don't even have handcuffs well, on me or anything. Well, I didn't do anything. Yes. <laughs> Harless wasn't arrested or charged with online harassment of Hunt's wife, but says she thinks the chief improperly used his connections to intimidate her. I just feel that it's not okay to accuse someone of something they didn't do. She messaged Charleston's mayor with her accusations, eventually meeting with the city's human resources department and attorney but she says she was never told the results of her complaint. I believe it was still swept under the rug and HR was used because it was election year. It was just a month or two before election. And 
I don't feel like anyone looked into anything. At this week's Charleston City Council meeting, Democrat Shannon Snodgrass called for an independent investigation by an outside agency. You cannot afford to lose the trust of the public when one of the main things that we are in charge of is public safety. In the wake of Snodgrass's speech, Charleston City Attorney Kevin Baker released a memo to council members where he went through Harless's complaint and resulting investigation. Chief Hunt contacted Eyewitness News and said he wanted to share a statement about what happened. I apologize for the hurt that my actions have caused my family. My friends and colleagues and the citizens of Charleston and that I made a mistake and I, I'll own my actions and that I fully cooperated with the investigation that was conducted by the human resources of the city of Charleston and through that investigation I agreed that I misused city property for a personal matter and through that I received a discipline of three days unpaid suspension back in June of last year and that this was a, a lapse in personal judgment and I realized that I've, I've got to work harder now more than ever to rebuild trust and I'm very appreciative of Mayor Goodwin continuing to have faith in me to lead the Charleston Police Department. Harless says Hunt's abuse of his authority and the city's efforts to sweep her complaints under the rug should be looked at by an outside agency. I have no faith in law enforcement now. If I need law enforcement, I don't know if I can trust them. I would like a thorough investigation. I would like it to be made public. And I would like anyone involved that has done any wrongdoing to be held accountable. In Charleston with this Eyewitness News investigation, I'm Kenny Bass. Now we asked Charleston Mayor Amy Goodwin to comment on Chief Hunt's actions and the city's response. As she has done several times before, Goodwin declined our request. However, Charleston City Councilwoman did react to today's events with another statement. In part, Ms. Snodgrass said that the statement from the city of Charleston City Attorney Kevin Baker, not the mayor, and the apology from Chief Hunt further support my demand for an outside investigation, which should have happened from day one. I apologize to our officers who face more difficult policing standards than ever, who now must abide by rules their own chief doesn't have to follow. Our officers in blue deserve better. The public deserves a full outside investigation, not one carried out in secret behind closed doors. In this day and age, qualified immunity remains one of the deadliest threats to U.S. citizens. There is no doubt, and as witnessed daily, that as long as police officers in our uncivilized nation are encouraged to murder without consequences, we can expect no improvements to our life expectancy. According to the United States National Academy of Sciences, and I quote, Police in the United States kill far more people than do police in other advanced industrial democracies. To date, Colorado, New Mexico, and New York have repealed qualified immunity, and we remain hopeful that in the near future, serial killers with badges will be held accountable for the unreasonable execution of citizens. Furthermore, the Academy of Sciences additionally says, journalists have stepped into this void and initiated a series of systematic efforts to track police-involved killings. And I bid to you, my fellow citizens, that this rampage of certified murders must be stopped for the safety of our children, handicapped, and veterans. Please support the new Institute for Justice and their Americans Against Qualified Immunity campaign. Check them out at www.aaqi.com. You'll also find them on Facebook and Twitter. That's Americans Against Qualified Immunity. That's all for now, my brothers and sisters. Stay safe and always film the police.